Hi, First Kids. How are you guys doing today? Are you guys getting ready for school, getting all your supplies ready and everything? It's getting to be an exciting time, isn't it, when you get to go back to school? Today, we're going to talk about the word mercy. Now, we probably hear this word a lot. We hear about God's mercy, and we hear about how we should use mercy with other people. But do you really know what mercy means? Well, in the dictionary, the word mercy means that we have compassion for other people and that when people do bad things, we don't hold grudges and we don't hold it against them. For example, let's say you went to school one day and you're walking down the hall and Bobby bumps up against you, pushes you into the wall, and then kind of laughs and walks on. And, you know, that kind of makes you a little bit angry because Bobby's your friend. And and so, but you think, oh, well, I'm not going to sit with him at lunch today because he was mean to me. That is holding a grudge. Sometimes, let's say another example would be that you and your sister or brother are playing with one of your toys and they break your toy and it's one of your favorite toys and it really makes you sad that it's broke and so you get revenge and you go and you break one of their toys or you do something mean back to them those are not showing mercy those two examples are not showing mercy mercy would be that you know when bobby just being just being a jerk and, and messing around kind of upset you. You just laugh it off and, and you still have lunch with him and, and all of that. Or if one of your siblings breaks your toys, it's like, you know, you just, you forgive them. Just like God always forgives us and shows us mercy. In the Bible, the story that we're talking about today is another story with David. Now remember, David has been anointed um, he's going to become king someday, and then even when he was still a little boy, he fought off Goliath. Well, in this story, David has become a man, and um, King Saul, if you remember, he's the not-so-nice king during this time. He does not like David. He's jealous of David, um, and so he decides he wants to kill David. And so he starts chasing David all over the countryside. Now, David has his own army, and David could stand up to King Saul and fight him, but he doesn't. He just keeps running from him and hiding. So David runs and hides, and King Saul keeps hunting him down, and finally they end up in the mountains. And David and his men are hiding in a cave. And King Saul, this kind of a little bit gross, but it is in the Bible. King Saul goes into the cave to relieve himself, otherwise to use the bathroom. And while he is doing that, King David's men are all poking at David and saying, here's your chance, here's your chance. You can go kill him. You can get rid of the king, you know, and then we could be done with all this running from him and all that. Well, David doesn't want to because he knows that God wants King Saul to be king at that point in time, and that that is, that is what God wants. And so, so David's okay with that, but he does sneak up on him, and he cuts off a piece of his robe. And then after King Saul walks out, David gets to feeling a little bit guilty because he, you know, cut off a piece of this really fancy robe. And so he goes running out, of the cave after King Saul, and he yells at him, King Saul, King Saul, you know, I don't know why you keep chasing me around. I don't know why it is that you want to kill me. I have always honored you as the king and done everything that I am supposed to do, and yet you keep trying to hurt me. But look, I have a piece of your robe. I could have, I could have killed you back in there. But instead, I am out here to tell you I'm sorry that I cut off a piece of your robe. 
And Saul kind of listens to David and he goes, wow, David's right. And he says to David, he says, you're right. You haven't done anything to me. You haven't done anything wrong. And yet I am constantly trying to hurt you. And, you know, what your Lord is teaching you, what God is teaching you to show mercy to other people, I need to do that too. And we need to, you know, God needs to reward you, David, for the mercy that you've shown me today. And so David um, continues to give his oath to King Saul. He continues to to be good and everything to King Saul because he knows that someday he will be king, but he will only become king when God decides it's time for him to be king. So in this story, the message is, is that even though David could on several occasions killed King Saul, he continued to provide mercy for him. And that was a good example of what God does for us, that sometimes we make God unhappy. And sometimes we do things that doesn't follow God's rules. But God never holds a grudge against us, and he never has revenge with us. He continues to forgive us, and he continues to give us mercy. And you know what? You don't have to do anything except love God in order to receive his mercy. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for always forgiving us for when we do the wrong things. Because sometimes we let our feelings get in the way and we get angry and we get hurt and we don't always remember to show other people mercy and compassion. But thank you for showing us how through the stories in the Bible like David. In your name, amen. Don't forget, kids, that on September 6th, we're going to have Sunday school here at the church for the children. And that on September 9th, we're going to have midweek manna um, for you guys. So don't forget to come, because I'm really looking forward to having you guys here. So we will see you next week. Bye.